Welcome to the Fly Me to the Moon um, banner. This is a darling little project. This is a three-dimensional kind of piece. Um, it's a single hanging banner, and this is rock lawn. And then we've got, of course, a lovely stencil for this. But um, we've got a cutout piece on top of here, and then I've glued her on using a spacer, and so it really gives some depth. I've used some hair, and it gives it, um, and then her hat goes on the hair, so it gives it a little built-up kind of look. I like it better than just something that's just perfectly flat. I think you're going to love the lesson. It is a lot of fun. I use a lot of time-saving techniques, but I think that we still achieve such an awesome quality. So enjoy. As I start my new project, Fly Me to the Moon, I want to be very clear. If you're going to hang your banners outside, um, like next to your door or anything like that, it can absorb moisture from the air. So you want to make sure to seal both sides of your wood with all-purpose sealer. This stuff is brilliant for anything that you're going to put outside. Um, it just really works. So I'm going to use a roller. And I'm just going to go ahead and get both sides of my surface based, and I can even run it along the edges. You could also spray if you wanted to, but this is just going to make certain that my wood is protected and moisture can't get in. Okay, and as I get ready to do multiple sides and things like that, I'm going to use these little um, painter's triangles. And they are made out of nylon material so that you actually don't mar your painting surface, and it works really well. I was kind of a skeptic. So you can just flip it over, I can roll on the back side, and I can let it dry, and it's got good air circulation above and below, and they all stack up for easy storage. And then you can even mount them onto a board and screw them down, so if you want to create a permanent drying station, you can do that as well. Okay, so after you dry, then you're going to want to sand, so it makes a rough grain. Sanding discs are really cool. There's a rough one that has two different kinds of rough grits, and then there's a smooth one that has two kinds of smooth grits. So with these two discs, you have four sheets of sanding paper that last a really long time. So you'll go ahead and you'll just sand down any kind of raised texture, and then you might go ahead and hit it with a smoother one as well to give yourself an agreeable um, surface. Anytime you seal wood, you're going to get the grain raising, and you'll do the same to your witch cutout. We're going to take our same um, two inch foam roller. For rock lawn, it's really important that you use a roller to base coat. If you use a brush, the paint like cakes in areas and it's very difficult to spread it out. The roller does a perfect job and I've noticed that people who have problems with any kind of curling on their rock lawn generally are people that don't use a roller. So you definitely want to use a roller. Okay, we're going to use Ultra Blue Deep and we are going to roll to need many ultra blue deeps so make sure you have a full bottle to get started okay so we'll just go ahead be careful of rollers spitting okay they tend to let loose and so you want to roll real smoothly and not too quickly otherwise you'll end up with it spitting all over your outfit and your clothes and the person next to you we're going to do this on our rock lawn and and i like to paint on my rougher side of my rock lawn so this is, and I've just used the um, small size rock lawn. This, the banner part of this is not as big as it, they normally are. So rock lawn comes in a roll, and one side is almost a little bit foamy, and the other side has got kind of a coarse texture. I really like the coarse textured side, so I'll just unroll it, and even though I've got some of these ridges and stuff, once I roll it and set it aside, those will kind of just settle out with the weight of the wet paint. And rock lawn takes a little bit longer to dry than um, you think it's going to, so give it plenty of time to dry. And you can force it dry with a blow dryer. Okay, so I've got my roller and I've got some of my Ultra Blue Deep. And then what I do is I just kind of roll in one direction. If you kind of go back and forth, sometimes you can pick it up and it'll roll on your roller. Okay, so I'm not worried about it getting on the back. We can go ahead and put a coat on the back as well. You could make the back be black if you wanted to. You could, um, you know, choose your colors and stuff like that. Okay, so notice I'm, I'm pushing, some, I'm giving some pressure. I want this to be squoze into those um, the fibers. And the neat thing about rock lawn is it doesn't fray and it doesn't um, generally doesn't curl. I haven't had mine curl. I think I've had one curl. So um, I really haven't had any problem with rock lawn at all, and mine travel to shows and stuff all over the country, so they really get abused quite, quite dramatically. So I'm just basing this whole thing in this blue, and then I'm going to cut my um, rock lawn out after I get my slip slop background done. 
Okay, so I've got my um, banner rolled and you can see it's still very wet. But what I want you to notice is that already everything is starting to settle down. And then I want you to notice that this little end right here is curly. Like it's curled up because that was on the inside of the roller. But here's what I would do if this were me and this is what I will do. So first of all, I'm just going to let this dry and just like chillax about it and um, just let it settle down on its own. But then when it is dry, I'll flip it over on the back side, so I'll blue face down. I'll blow dry this edge right here, and you'll watch it just almost cave in. It'll just flatten itself out, and then I'll let it cool with it face down. So I'll let it just cool naturally, and then when I flip it back over, it will be pretty flat. And if that still doesn't happen, then this will be my edge that I flip over, and I won't, just won't worry about it. All right, you can see how this is already settled down. So we'll just go ahead and give it another coat, and we'll let that dry, and once again, you're just really working that paint in. Okay, I've wetted my background again with the, the um, Ultra Blue Deep. I'm going to put the nose of my roller brush into this, and while it's wet, I'm going to roller slip slap. Stand up and get all in it. I've got that stenciled bottom here that will um, be black, maybe even black with glitter. In my head I'm kind of designing it as I go. And then this has about five inches of slop to overlap, so I'll just bring that up kind of close to it. Okay, now that we've got kind of a basis for this, I'll go into our one inch oval glaze and we'll start doing some magical movementy stuff. Let it soften. Okay, as we need to. Pardon my big fat head going in the way. Gotta work on this one. It's wet in wet, or it just doesn't quite work. And if you go too far one way, you can just reach into the blue and go back a few steps the other way. I think I need a couple pieces of tape. Okay, so now I'm taped down can go back and forth into my blue. A little bit too wide over there. So we'll just kind of get that busy. I'm a little bit white in the middle. Bring some of that up. And go get a secret weapon. Okay, we're going to get a damp sea sponge. And I'm going to start walking this around. Kind of blending and softening. I think it might be possible that that might be the worst sea sponge I've ever used in my life. It's really a kind of hard, firm one. Okay, so now I'll go back and kind of blur the texture that I got with the sea sponge. Okay, leave some of it. It starts getting kind of dreamy and eerie and stuff. I 
going to step back and I'm going to squint. I don't want to make mud. I don't want to make a, like a middle blue color. I want to have a really good background. Okay, I found a piece of my soft sea sponge. And that's going to allow me just to kind of walk around. I can even pick up maybe a little bit of white. I dampened it. And I'm twisting and dragging. Okay. And then once again, now we go in with just feather like little blending kind of strokes in little X's. It's going to be a dreamy, eerie, awesome. got many more steps to do on top of this so I like the blowing kind of misty look of dragging this white across okay and be coming down from the top So we could start kind of setting the mood. Coming back behind the word. And then settling in behind that little town scene. Don't want to stop down here too soon. Make sure you cover enough. Okay, so I think we have a lot of dreaminess going on. Okay, I think I can dig that. Okay, we're going to do the same exact thing with our topper. Got to make sure you do these corners because that needs to blend in with the sky that is below the lower banner part. Whoops, spitting paint. And now I put that aside. And we start our slip slap process. Then I'll compare the two of them to make sure that they blend together. little bit muddier. I'm going to put some blue back in. Make sure you get to your edges. Make sure you blend your edges. Okay, now I'm going to go into the white with the drag and twist. Sorry about the head in the way. Got a little bit of glare. It's a little bit easier for me to flick one way in both ways. I have better control flipping towards myself. Don't forget you can turn things so that you get different angles. I gotta get 
right up next to that edge. We'll go through and fade. So I think I'm going to go compare the two and then I'll just adapt. Okay, you can see I made a great big giant mess out of my palette here, or my, um, this is my nonstick matte surface. I used to just put brown paper down, but the paper, like water, would absorb through it and stuff. I'm going to take this little handy scraper, which has got rounded edges, so it won't mar the mat, and I just, I squirt it with water, and then I just scrape all the stuff, and it just loosens everything, and then I won't be picking up paint and all that. The neat thing about these non-stick mats, both the black and this um, brown color, is hot glue doesn't stick, two-part epoxy doesn't stick, um, like varnish doesn't stick, nothing sticks. So you can put glue down and everything and it will just come up with the same technique. I'm using my yellow tracing paper on a roll. Can you see how crystal clear those lines are? This is tracing paper that comes on a roll and what I love about it, if I can get to the end, is it tears really straight in like all the directions. So I can just tear off a little piece of my tracing paper and then I don't have to have a sheet laying out and about and stuff and it just stays on my roll. And I can get it in 24 inch lengths so I can do whole floor cloths without gluing together my pieces of um, pattern. Okay, and the pen that I'm going to use is a pen sticks pen. And what's different about this than like Sharpies, Sharpies bleed. And so this little guy right here just makes this perfect little crisp line and I don't have to worry about any bleeding. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just use my wild orchid and a jumbo dauber and I'm going to just go ahead and get some lovely base coats done in the areas where she's going to be this color. And this is just a much easier way of doing your base coats rather than trying to line up to the edges on cut pieces. There'll be a little bit of that, but we won't have to do quite as much. Okay, when we get ready to open our bottles of paint, I've got a pop top here, and I've painted this one with blue Delft. And I've got one with a jewel and an initial, which would make an awesome gift for a fellow painters, and then some with roses. So you can totally paint these. Um, you just want to prime the plastic and then paint them as usual. And you can see they're very, very durable. Um, I've been painting with these for a very long time. And you use, there's a little corner edge on both sides that will puncture the plastic when you flip it open. And then you can just peel it off. And so it's a really fast, easy way to open those pesky bottles of paint with the little plastic tops on them. Okay, so I'm gonna paint, I'm gonna base my cat, my boots, my hat, black. And I think that's the, oh, and her hair, the general area of her hair. Okay, as I'm trying to figure out what colors to use, I've got out my three-in-one color, um, color tool, and I know that my purple is gonna be over here in my purple family. So this, let me introduce you to this thing. So each, each of these is a chip, okay? And it's like the primary color of of whatever that color is. So it's going to be a really strong color. So we want to go over here into our purpley colors. And then on here, what it does is it gives you um, the pure color here in the middle, which is going to match this. And then this is as you highlight, and then this is as you add black. And then when you go on the back side, it tells you a little bit more. So this is toned using a gray color. This is, um, and this is adding black, this is adding white. Okay, so you can get all of these colors with one color of paint, which is really cool, but I'm looking to it right now for advice. I know my background is blue, which we could argue might sit over here, and then I've got my purples, and I'm going over here to my fuchsias, and I can come across here to my green. Okay, so, or I could go into my greens and whatever. So these are going to give me suggestions. This one right here has me over in... Um, that kind of tealy turquoisey color with my moon color and the purple. 
So I think I might be able to make that happy. Um, so I'm going to borrow from these and I'll just explore just a little bit more. But this is a great way to get suggestions for things from home decor all the way um, to painting suggestions. If you want to just, you know, paint um, sewing quilts, all that kind of stuff. This is good for all of your color needs. So besides having all of the um, color tools, the, one of the coolest things is it also has red and green value finders on the back side. And what that does for you is the red subtracts warm colors and the, the green subtracts cool colors. And so what you can do is you can see when you've got your contrast. Let's go on here. Let's look at these. See how that's a beautiful bunch of paints. Notice that some of those colors got canceled out. Notice that the other ones got canceled out. So this is a good way to see whether or not you've got your highlights high enough. Okay, so, and I lied to you, this one cancels out your um, cool colors and this one does your warm colors. Okay, so see how that is. So now when you're highlighting and shading, you can tell if you've got enough or not. So like in this case, you would be, okay, that's really, maybe my Y was just way too bright. It would be screaming out there but they've done a good job of balancing this. Okay, so that's just an added bonus. These are like $5 a piece, so I think that almost pays for the tool just by itself. And then everything's on board, and it also gives you your design colors as well. So it gives you your hex colors and your um, CMY um, colors. So, and that way you can do your coding if you're a coder, you can do your layouts if you're a graphic designer, all of that. So it's really good for just about everybody. Okay, we're dry now, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take desert turquoise and a big old dome brush, and we are going to, we've got the big old moon going to be over here, so we're going to scumble along and create some soft, dreamy night sky. This little witchy poo has just packed up her bags and she is out of there. Try not to lead too straight a line, which I just did just then. I try to tell a story, so it's kind of moving and dancing and misty and, and stuff. You won't be able to see it really, really a lot but when we get the highlight colors on, you'll really be able to see it. Okay, so we'll go into Bahama Blue. Whoops. Gonna really rub that off your paper towel. Start doing it a little bit stronger. Okay, so it starts, you can start seeing the movement. Okay, we'll repeat again. Just kind of got to build it up just a little bit. You can kind of scumble in here and there just to kind of dreamify the sky. Now we're going to go into the de uh, the. Bahama blue plus white. And 
And you don't want to cover up everything you've done. You just want to kind of let it trail along. So see how I'm over on this edge of it. And try not to make straight lines. We already talked about that. Go into just white and see how crazy shocking that's going to be. Kind of make it be scribblier. Okay, I've got my witch in various and sundry base coats so you can kind of see where she's going to sit. Okay, and I think I might be about done for the upper because a lot of this gets covered up. Might want to go ahead and introduce a little bit of something going on over here because that's an area that I don't think is covered. Okay, so now we move on to our Rocklon. Okay, Rocklon tends to get a little bit rough when you base coat it. So we just take it and just sand it and it'll knock right down. Okay, so I've got this crease where I'm gonna fold it and then I'm going to just undo it so that I don't end up with a line as I do my dry rubbing. And we're just gonna continue. Come up in that corner. Just have so much fun with it. Just drawing that down through. You probably got to swing on over here, just like gymnastics. You got to touch all the edges of the mat. And we can drop down over here and just have a little bit floating around here and there. And somewhere I put my glasses away up on top of my head. Some lonely spots over here. And then we just keep switching our paper towel to find a dry spot. And I've marked my roofs over here. Okay, and I will go into, ah, hello, too much paint. Bahama. Scumbles over here. And you can just streak around over the tops of the blue wherever you think things need to be faded more in. Make that be bigger. Bippity bobbity boo here. So now I can go over here where I want to blend and 
just run things down just a little bit here and there. Isolate it here and there. Okay, so we start seeing, and you can kind of mask it, and you can start seeing like the pattern and stuff. It looks a little messy out here right now, but we'll take care of that as we go. Okay, now we're going to take our Bahama Blue, and we are going to start adding some stars. I'm just going to swirl them on here and there. Some we can do really softly, some we can do strongly. Okay, and we'll just start sprinkling stars every old which way until we fill it up however full we want. So carry our teal color around just a little bit, change your sizes up. We're going to just Bahama blue. Maybe we'll make some stronger sparkly stars. Misty stars. Oops. Okay, and so then you see how we're starting to make, you can see it in here, starting to see a little bit of pattern. And I'll go ahead and switch out and do my topper while I'm in this color on my brush. Because when I switch it to the light color, I won't want it to be, um, it'll end up being too light for a faint little star sky. Okay, definitely off the edges. Star stencils make stars so easy. Anything with pointed edges you want stencils for. Okay, so that's just following along nicely. Now let's get into a little bit of white with our Bahama Blue. And let's start looking at picking up some magic stuff. Maybe we'll add a strong, strong medium stars. Maybe we'll cluster a couple. Okay. It's coming down along. And we'll do the same here. We'll start adding. Stardust Trail Stars. Turn it sideways and see if we can't get some different kind of action. Okay, some more white. to our little city. And I think I'll go in this area right here. Just kind of randomly go ahead and do an all over starry kind of madness. 
just for real faint. I want that busyness in the background. Love backgrounds. Okay, go into a bit more white. I could add a little bit more white to my vapor trail here. Once you start getting other colors in the sky, then it's easier to make those decisions. Next, we'll go into a brush I have to go find. All right, now we're going to take our Bahama Blue and our, um, I've got my rake, and I really water it down, and I'm going to move it over here and tap off all my excess. And then I'm going to anchor the handle of my brush, and that's going to help me aim for exactly where I want those spatters. If you do it up here, you end up with snow. So this way I can reinforce this drama, but I have control. And we'll go into some white. See how we have that little bit of magic going around? And then I think we'll go into, hmm, let's go into black plus our um, desert turquoise. Just kind of do a little bit of snow. darker areas. Okay, and I think right now we'll leave it and I'll get the topper done. Okay, I'm going to get a base coat of cocoa on my moon. I'm going to hold this down nice and firmly. And I'm going to base away from my cut edge. This stencil is more pure laziness than anything. I don't want to trace, I don't want to base, I want it to go fast. So once I get away from my edge, then I can just be free to, to do my normal stuff. But I love big areas like this. I love being able just to get it filled in. So I would like to point out how freaking perfect that line is all the way around. You can't get that in any way, shape, or form doing just regular base coat. You're going to end up with wonky stuff going on. It just is so nice and clean. So this is my undercoat, and we'll just let that dry, and that way it just kind of maps out um, where our colors go, and then I'll decide which color I want the moon to be. Now, because my moon is on the same stencil as my town, I don't want anything that's leaked out on the back side of this, hello, ah, um, to make a mark up here. So I've gone ahead and hit hit this with the blow dryer so that I can make sure that I don't have any anything there. Now what's neat about this little stencil guy here is it is going to give me my bottom cut line. Not, it won't cut it for me, but it'll give me my bottom line at the same time as it gives me my top line here. Okay, so I want to make sure that I'm straight. And Make sure I'm on the bottom here. So it's this drippy little ghosty kind of stuff. And I'm going to make sure that I'm within some kind of straight, which I am. 
Okay, and then we'll take another Jumbo Dauber and lay out black. Always pounce off in another spot. Okay, so now this one, we've unbridged this. This is very, very unbridged, and normally I'm like a bridging Nazi. I want to make sure that, you know, there's no way that things could lift up. But I don't, it defeats the purpose to have this great big hole here. So I'm just going to use my fingers, and I'll go towards the inside and rock it around, changing the position of my dauber around my edges. So I'm scooching it this way. Okay, then I'll move my hands. Now, um, a couple pieces of tape here would not go very, would not be a miss. Okay, we're also going to use the stencil to put the details in. It just probably won't do it now. I'll lay it back over later. I really want to get um, my edges done and kind of know where I'm going with everything. So I'm just getting in. They, they say you start with your big rocks or start with what you know. And um, that's what I'm doing is I know this is going to be a black little town. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to take my T-square, my big giant T-square, and I'm going to make a mark using my Ghost Writer. It's got a gray ceramic lead, a, no, a gray ceramic lead, a roller ball so that you can trace, and a comfort grip to make it easier to trace, and then a white ceramic grid. And that comes off with water, so or spit, or varnish, or whatever you want to remove it with, but it will not lock in and be permanently part of your project. Okay, it's about time to get going with some of our details. So I'll get you close in. We're going to dry rub on this broom handle here with some cocoa right up the middle. Make little swirly motions. And that will just give us a little bit of depth and dimension. When you have a bigger area, you can kind of carry that in kind of a little C-stroke. And don't connect them. This is going to be a little bit of a gnarly little broom. And the more breaks there are, then the gnarlier it will look. Okay, then you can repeat with a little bit of a dry brush. Oops, not so much right up the middle and that'll give it a little bit stronger look okay we're going to get into our little short brights notice how much shorter that bristle is than most flat sorry flat brushes i'm going to use bittersweet chocolate and then we're going to just shade with our brush at a little bit of an angle and what this um, shorter brush does for us is it gives us more control. Okay, the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to mist my palette paper. Get you on there. And notice that when I'm misting, these little balls of water appear. So what I can do is to really control my paint is I can go slurp up just a little bit more water whenever I need it and then I don't have to wash my brush out, I don't have to reload, I don't have to reload my paint. I can just extend that float by adding more water. So I'll just float the edges. Bittersweet chocolate. Okay, I'm going to go into thinned bittersweet and thinned cocoa. And I'm going to add some little details to my broom. That'll just give it a little bit more depth. And we'll add just a little bit of cocoa as well. Plot that. Just give it some highs and some lows.
it's kind of fun. I like painting with grain. Okay, so we're going to work on our broom. So we're going to have our little hairs come out of our broom. And we want to make sure that they cross each other and that they're really kind of just fun. Every now and again, I'm just going to mix a little bit of brown in my color so that I don't end up um, with it. Whoops, that's cocoa with it too light. Try not to make the same actions. So don't make them all um, fun. I keep trying to go into that cocoa. Okay, we'll keep it straight here. Don't want these to be all like little clones of each other. So and then over here they need to be heavier and thinner and cross each other and all that kind of stuff because this is just really a gnarly broom. Okay, so now we're going to highlight the things that are on top. So we're going to dry brush, that means we're going to have our paint dry in our brush, and we're just going to highlight with honey brown that which gets the most attention. This is going to add a lot to the texture of our broom. Okay, the idea is not to go everywhere doing everything. And let some guys be the stars and some guys not be the stars. I want to kind of have things at the edges get at least highlighted. Okay, next we're going to use a little bit of, let's go into mustard seed plus our honey brown. And we're going to bring up just the center area of the broom. So we'll make it stand out more and make it feel rounder. Stay out of the areas that are in shadow. And don't forget to just be real kind of jerky about this. Don't worry about following the lines exactly. It'll be way more interesting if you do that. Don't get it too messy because then I think it'll look fuzzy. And then always lean back and squint and see what you got. Okay, we're going to shade with um, Lamp Black plus the bittersweet chocolate at the top and down the sides and then above and below the the whatever that thing is called that holds the broom together okay and that gives us just a little bit more depth and then we can shade under this cat where he's going to be casting some shadow and we can shade up the side just a little bit. And that's about our broom. Okay, so we're going to take our Raphael and we're going to line. We readjusted this and keep you on camera. And we'll line our crosshairs here. go into honey brown and finally a little bit of cocoa and a touch of marigold. Okay we're going to go in with a little bit of olive green and we're going to get her chinny chin chin highlighted and her nose and let's go for her cheek here. And we'll get the hands in just a second. 
And then we'll go into, let me try Plantation Pine. I've done green faces before and thought the evergreen was just a little bit too bright. Yeah, that'll work out great. Not quite so glowing as evergreen on top of these greens. Let's go one more time, a little bit heavier. And she's going to have some details and stuff like that that I've got to transfer first. Okay, and so we'll go into her fingers, giving them just a little bit of a highlight. As well. This thumb that's over the top. are actually over the top too. I've just got them base coated funny. So I'll have to fix that. Okay. And then we'll shade. Where her hand comes out. shade across the knuckles. Okay. Okay, base the eye with bleach sand, the eyeball with lamp black, and then the teeth and the mouth with the lamp black. I will go in and grab just a little bit of a shading around nostril to give that some shape right under right there and we need to give that shape just a little bit more and I'm wondering if we don't need her to have a little bit of blush but I'm not quite sure how to make that happen well, we're going to try it. We're going to use some coral blush and give her a little pink cheek. Yeah, I like that. Gives her a little bit more kind of happiness. Okay, I'm going to go in and give her just a little bit of eyelash. Blot my brush. Makes her just a little bit more, less sinister maybe. Okay, we're getting close on her little shoe, and that's going to have the little um, sole of her shoe is going to be um, zinc. And this little kind of cast shadowy thing. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and go into zinc with our dry rubbing. Oops, a little bit strong. Get a little bit of our desert turquoise. Uh, I always love it when we start getting into these glazing and, and fun colors. Just makes painting so much more fun. Just add that little bit of blue there. And then we'll do the buckle in our golds. All right, we're going to take our sticky mesh and we are going to create some texture using lilac and soft heather on her dress. Just makes a nice all over kind of texture. You can do it at different angles. You can do it light and, light and soft. You can do it strong. You can do it in a flow, like I can indicate that there are, um, the dress is flowing. 
So it kind of almost self-shades or highlights. Okay, now we'll move into the second color. And let's go ahead and pick up that idea that this is self-highlighting. So see how that just creates that just a little bit of shading. Okay, we'll add a little bit of texture with the, um, let's see, we've got grape juice here. I'm going to just neutralize the color, and then we'll put that through the sticky mesh where we wanted that shading to be, and that will just add a little bit more depth. Go ahead and highlight her knee. I'll neutralize the color in this brush once again. So just highlight and bring that color down. And we can bring it down straight down on the folds. just gives it that kind of flow. I think something is happening right here. I don't think that's supposed to be like that. Okay, and we can go into that darker color, into the grape juice, and we can increase the look of the folds. And that just really gives us that undulating kind of look. Okay, and then we need to shade. So I'll get out a larger short bright brush and we'll go shading in the grape juice. I've got water drops on my palette and I'm ignoring them. Okay, so I'll get that out there. And then we'll shade. At the top and the bottom of the cuff. So we're going to add some stars to your skirt. I've got just a little uh, mini, we've got mini stencils that are in all these different patterns. We've got hearts and bubbles and dots and lines for stripes and different size dots and bricks and all the things. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my, let's see, honey brown. And I'm going to line my stencil up. And I just want to go ahead and base coat. And give her some stars. We're going to use the little short bright brush and we're just going to go ahead and highlight. It would have been easier to go ahead and do this with the dry rub brush while I had the stencil out, but I wanted to kind of move along. So this is the way that I'm going to do this. So you could do it with the stencil in place. You just have to kind of take your time. I 
also go ahead and be base coating or highlighting our buckle while we're down here. Get that a little bit of mustard seed. And then we can go into our milk chocolate. And flip our witch the other way and decided her name must be Broomhilda. And give it a little bit of shade. Okay, we're gonna do a little bit of a little bit of esque stroking. Make some little braided trim there with our honey brown. Oops, a little bit heavy honey brown. And now we'll take the same honey brown and we'll just give it a dry brush. Whoops, dry brush means that it should be scratchy looking, not base coated looking. Dry brush right up the middle. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to do her robe next. And so what we're going to do is we're going to highlight center of her arm. Give it some high and some low. Back here on her elbow. I'm doing this with Wild Orchid. Okay, and then she's got a billowy cape back here. That's just kind of flowing. Okay, I think that works pretty well. And then we're gonna go ahead and do a hat as well. So this is flipped, so that needs to be nice and bright highlighted. This comes in right here, flips over that. That's on top. Okay, so I've got a nice gnarly looking hat for her. Of course, not done yet. Okay, and I think I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use the little bat stencil. These are so stinking cute. They're like four inch by four inch. They're just adorable. Let's give her some bats on her robe. I think while I've got this color, these colors out, I'm going to go ahead and highlight my bats with a little bit of desert turquoise. Take a little peek. That's kind of cute. So we'll just go ahead. to turquoise. Okay, 
we're going to shade on our robe with soft black. And so that will be right where things go under things. Oh, I didn't get our sleeve with the bats. Don't know that they'll be missed by the time. I'll probably have to sneak one or two of them in there. Okay, and that's adding just a teeny bit of a reddish color, red violet. Just a little bit of shading to our braid as well. And definitely to the braid over here. Okay, we're going to make her bag be a little burlappy looking. So we're going to dig into our it's the burlap color. Yep. Burlap and just highlight. The bag. Let's get some high and some low. Take the hat off. Give it all over texture then that just gives it that kind of really I'm a rustic bag thing and then highlight the the round part and that makes it um, easier to see a shape. Okay, and then we'll get this mouth of this thing. Okay, okay, we're gonna shade her her bag, not her hair, with burnt umber. I'm going to warm that bag up just a little bit. I want to really kind of give the illusion of just kind of like lumpiness. Like, what in the world does she have in that bag, you know? Mm, I don't like that there. Oh, fingers are the best erasers, aren't they? I'm going to add some writing bag of tricks. Okay, now we're going to take our burnt umber and we'll scumble our shading up the bag just a little bit. I'm going to sink that writing in as well. And we'll go into the burlap, just to increase the highlights. Okay, we're going to do our little witch's hat. I'm going to dry brush up the middle of the hat band with olive green. Okay, and we'll shade on either side with plantation pine. All right, so we'll go in with our short bright, and then the neat thing about these brushes is you can really walk that in just a little bit, and that's just going to give you some of your roundness. Yeah, cute. 
And so this is going to allow us to carry some of that green. We've got our green hands and we've got a green hat band. And we've got the green kitty cat. Um, oh, and that's the same, same steps that we'll take with the kitty cat um, band as well. Okay, so we're going to do our little kitty cat. We're going to do him with um, some highlights of desert turquoise. So we want a big highlight where there's movement. And so we'll do it strong at the top and then fade him down. So he'll be kind of self-shading because the black will be his shadow color. love dry rubbing because it just is so easy to do. If you have any beginner um, painters that you're ever teaching, this is a really good method to get details. And now our kitty cat starts showing up. That's kind of cool. Just re highlight to make it stronger. I think we're going to end up going into this Baham blue. I'm worried that this might be just a little bit too teal, so I think Indian turquoise. Wait and see the difference between the two of these. Okay, when your paint bottles start getting really, really um, clogged with stuff, it's time to switch to your pop top because. These start hurting my fingers, um, but this is the stuff that actually causes that when it dries around that in that. So sometimes you can just peel those off and that will alleviate some of the difficulty in opening your bottles of paint. Okay, so see how that leans to the green side and that leans to the blue side. I'm afraid of the green side on this cat, so I'm gonna keep him cool. See, that just really popped. Yeah, that's much nicer. Okay, I'm going to switch to the smaller brush. His arm, and those are his little fingers. Okay, I'm going to go on his ears. If you leave a little bit of black in between, that'll make it look like it's round and shaded and stuff like that. I think my poor cat's fingers have gotten um, buried in the broom. Okay, so then we'll go into a mix of the desert turquoise and the Indian turquoise, and we'll go ahead and just highlight those little fingers. To kind of drag that in just a little so that it all kind of blends. Do the same thing here. And then I think we'll give him some lovely teal claws.
He's like, hey, not without me, man. Okay, let's give Broomhilda some hair. Go our toe a little bit brighter. This is where you can start sprinkling some color around. All right, now, now let's go ahead and give her, give her hair. She's gonna have some pretty wild hair and I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna glue that black hair over the top of this. So I just don't want this to be stagnant and black only. Okay, and while I've got my tealy colors out, I think we'll go ahead and add a little bit of that to our bag, which was looking just a little bit lonely. We can give a little bit to her arm and to her robe. Just adds a lot. Over to the hat broom. A little bit on the broom. And we can go back here onto that broom and into Indian turquoise and a little bit on her knee. It's a little marriage color right here. It just brings everybody together. this hair, I'm going to pull out just a handful of the hair and I'll cut it off. Okay, there's a little trick with this I learned a long time ago. I think this might have been in the pom-pom making days, that if you want to make a fuller and all that kind of stuff, that what you do is you take it and you just frizz it out. Can't have her looking too crispy and wonderful. Give her a little haircut to see what needs to happen. And then we put her hat on top. And oops, get you on camera. And I think that that will be very fun. Okay, we'll have to have a few little, have to spend a little time. I'm gonna add, what I, here's what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little drop of um, hot glue and then I'm gonna attach my different, give her a little hair design with my hot glue. Okay, I've just gone ahead and glued her hair down, down over here, and then I've glued her hat on, making sure that the hair is kind of underneath that hat. And you can just cut it and trim it and do whatever you need to with it to get it how you like. You could also put a little bit of glitter in her hair if you wanted it to be a little bit sparklier, but I think I'm going to leave it right now. I was reaching into my painting supplies to find a base coating brush, and I'm going to rebase my moon, and I found this wonderful um, filbert brush. That is so hard I can't even bend it and so this is an awesome opportunity to show off one of the best money-saving things you'll ever find this is a brush groomer and this is brush cleaner and restorer I love that it has this little well right here so that you can just pour that into there and then you just put your brush inside the brush cleaner and restorer and instantly you have a brush that you can turn and flip and you can see I'm not applying any heavy pressure and these parts right here are super pointy and be careful they will stab you and so you can just tease out any of the heavy this one doesn't have a lot of heavy stuff it just had something that had hardened like varnish or something in there and something very green and then when you're done you'll just wash your brush and so this just saved me like 12 bucks and this only costs like six or eight 
So, you know, it cost the money that you'll save by just rescuing these brushes. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with this brush. And then that is what I do um, on that note. These little guys right here, um, because I let the paint, I don't know if you can tell, but that only bends halfway down the bristle. Um, because I let this be so dry when I'm doing this, let me push this off to the side. You can just go in there and you can see I'm already getting movement. <laughs> And I have some brown and I have some yellow and it just softens that paint, takes it out. That's why I don't worry about these brushes that much because I know that I can clean it out. Okay, so I just tease that out. And notice I'm not going back and forth, I'm just tickling that out that way. Oh, I had a ton of stuff in there. Holy goodness. Wow. Okay, well this brush will be all nice and restored. And while you're sitting here doing this to one brush, then you just take over your other brushes and just go ahead and give them, that one's pretty good, give them a little test. I can see the color in that one. And you can just use this stuff muddy. And it's um, the neat thing about this is it is non-toxic, biodegradable, water soluble, non-flammable, non-abrasive, and low vapor. So the only thing that I have to say bad about it is don't use it with styrofoam because it will eat your styrofoam. Okay, so don't um, pour it in styrofoam and put it on top of your antique piano. Anyway, that is how you do this and I'll go wash my brushes. Okay, as I'm reaching in for another brush, do you see this kind of big bushy kind of um, effect that I've got going on here? What's happened is all of this paint that's hardened at the ferrule from base coating and whatever, so paint dries with air exposure, so that's what's happened is I've gotten it up there and then this is the part that's not very juicy and so the air dries the paint and then it just creeps and creeps and creeps and builds up over time. So if I used my brush cleaner and restorer on this brush, it would become a chisely flat brush. So that's kind of good to know. All right, but right now I'm just going to use it as a base coat brush. And I'll just have to switch when I get near my... Um, my points and edges. And actually, I'm being such a goofy goomball because I have a stencil for this. Okay, I'm going to use these dome brushes, and I've got to say that the half inch and I think the five eighths are my very favorite size. And when I wash them, I make sure that I wash them. I just put them under running water, and I really back and forth on this. And what happens when I do that? This is this is the five eighths. Notice how long these bristles are compared to these. So the shorter they get, the tighter they get. I like them much better when they get a little worn out. So I have to work on these brushes. I have to remember to grab these brushes and then really work them. So I do love the half inch a lot more than the other big ones. Although here is an example of a 5 eighths that has been really rubbed down. They're almost equal in length. But see how nice and stiff that is. That makes a really controlled um, dry rubbing brush, and I'm actually going to use that. Okay, I'm going to use my stencil as a mask. And I'm going to tape it down on the edges where it's not going to matter as much. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to go into my mustard seed dry rub, and then I'm going to hold this down and then just rub into my moon. Like that. See how quickly that goes? Lovely technique. And we don't want to make a line right there, so I won't I won't try to get it all the way over there. Okay, and then we'll pick up a little bit of white. I'm going to have some glow going into the sky, but I really want to just kind of control it. Okay, and then we're going to use our sticky mesh. And we're going to use basically just white with a little bit of yellow in it. And we'll just go every old which way. Stencils as masks are amazing things because it allows you to make a great big old mess wherever you want 
without having to really worry about it. I'm going to need a new piece of magic mesh. This is this thing is getting caked. Okay, fill in. It just adds a fun look to the night sky. Okay, then I'll go ahead and take off my tape. Finish my technique down there, because that's easy to hold down. You give them a little bit of magic mesh. Ooh, a little too white. And repeat up here. Way too white. Okay. So now we have a wonderfully highlighted moon. So that brush goes in the water and you'll notice that my ferrules split open. It's because I leave them in the water like these and sometimes they'll be in that water for a week because I'll get busy and forget that I need to go wash my brushes. Okay, so then we're going to take uh, milk chocolate. I think I've run out of every bottle of paint for this project. Every now and again, it just all happens at the same time. Okay, and so we'll take our milk chocolate and we'll go on the back side of our moon and I'll have to bring my mask back for this bottom area. But I'll just get you started here. Just gonna shade the back side of the moon. Okay, we are going to get out just a little bit and all my paint's creeping in here. We're going to do a glaze with red violet. And when I say glaze, what I want to do is really thin that out so that you can't hardly tell what color that is. It's not anything like that color right there. And that's just going to sink that in over there. Oop, got to be careful. Side of my own. And then we can go in and draw that in just a little bit. Anything that needs mopping, just tap it with a big old fluffy mop on the clean edge. There we go. If you had anything that you felt like needed to be kind of smoothed out, I see one little area right here that I don't like, you can just dry rub back over the top of it and that'll be like makeup and it'll make it all even. All right, we're gonna go into some cocoa and we're gonna create the moon glow on our sky. So we'll just start, the theory is that cocoa will kind of undercoat things just a little bit. Yellow tends to be a very transparent color. Start building some glow. It's not a base coat, so be careful not to space it as you get away from your edge where it needs to be stronger, then you want to start rubbing bigger, longer strokes. Okay, we're going to give this puppy a try. We're going to base our moon letters with cocoa. See what we shall see. I love this stencil. Okay, so we're going to work on highlighting the tops of the letters. So I'm going to just dry rub. Oops, that one's just a little bit wet. So see what happens when your stencil is, or when your letters are wet, is you can dig a hole. And depending on if you're stippling or rubbing, that can really, um, if it's stippling, then the paint is heavier. So it can be easier to remove. I kind of like rubbing the letters when I get to this stage, so just be careful. Makes it so easy to do it through the stencil, too. Let's draw it down. Come on, puppy dry. 
going to go down about halfway, or maybe even a little bit more. Let's get that thing done there. Okay, and then we'll go into the yellow plus the white. And then that'll be a quarter of the amount. So just at the tops, basically. I'm drawing in towards the middle. Okay, and then we'll go using this as a mask, same as we did above. make some of our awesome texture happen. Okay, keeping it at the top. I don't think I like how far that came down there. Okay, then I'll put this brush aside. I'll just wrap it in paper towel and I'll find another one. And we'll do our shading. So we'll go into our milk chocolate kind of magical. And we'll just do a little bit more down at the bottom. And then we'll reach into our uh, red violet at the very bottoms. Definitely going to need some drop shading just to sink it all in together. And now I have some decisions to make. Okay, in theory, we're going to do the same technique but with Wild Orchid. go ahead and do all this curly stuff over here with the wild orchid as well. And I think I'm just going to go ahead and give this its outline because it's going to need to get base coated. So I'll just treat that as a base coating line. base coat it with the, um, the grape juice, I think, is the darker one, the darker room. Yeah, maybe not. I'll figure it out. Okay, so I'm going to go into the lilac, and one more time, and then we're just going to make these guys just kind of sparkle out at their edges. And then we'll go into Soft Heather. And it's not quite ready to, to play nice. Take a little sneak peek. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, and then we'll go with that same series and we'll highlight the tops of 
fly word. Then we'll go into the soft heather. Repeat again because I wiped it all off. Okay, and then we'll go through with a little bit of white. Then we're going to go into royal purple and we'll work our way up from the bottom. And give our little base over here just a little bit of concrete. Repeat and then just a teeny bit of soft black. coat my banger. Okay, before I do that, I'm going to use a number four pro round and I want to tackle this, this drop shading because I need to be able to see how anchored everything looks to decide on colors. Okay, so we'll go on all of the left sides because I just seem to always do that. I've got a mix of black plum and lamp black and water. And we'll do unders as well. See what that does to the lettering? It's magic. Okay, while we're waiting for things to dry, I'm going to go ahead and give a little drop shading to our swirls as well. just makes everybody show up and be happy. See how much better that is than that. And make sure you keep adding water. Okay, so we'll go ahead and shade with the, um, I think you are Black Plum. So, shade behind. Give our little ribbon a little bit of jazz. And, try not to walk through my floats. And then I think I want to do some jazz with the um, dry rubbing and the sticky mesh. So what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and dry rub right from the top down. Stay out of my wet areas. That's just going to soften everything. So I'm dry rubbing with Wild Orchid. And we'll repeat with our, I think it's Lilac. And that 
that's kind of fell in forward. I think I want a little bit more of that coming down from above. Let's go into soft heather. Just want a little bit more light right there in the middle. Okay, all right, and I think we'll go into lilac. And just gently do the letters. Scumble is just fun, isn't it? Just makes it go fast. Fast and easy, no trace, no base. That makes me a happy camper. Now we'll soft heather it at the top. And maybe we'll repeat soft heather. And then we need to go get into something that will shade. So we'll go into the royal purple. I want to be careful that my letters don't fade into the base coat which the base coat I made um, Wild Orchid plus the Royal Purple. Okay, so that's what we've got. Okay, so I kind of, I think I can dig that. So, we'll go over here and we'll find our correct size round brush and get into our black and Um, that is the black and the royal purple mix. Some water. And that's just a little bit heavy. Okay, we're going to use a little bit of the red violet and just glaze float the letters for a little bit more jazz. I like that better. And we'll put a little bit down here in the gold as well. Kind of universally seems to like both colors. I just anchors that bottom. Okay, and then maybe just a little bit here. as well, across the bottom of that. And this is where we start sprinkling colors as I get kind of ballistic here. A little bit here and there where things come out. I could go back into my stencil, but this is probably just as fast. And that just kind of gives it a little anchoring. Okay, now I want to tell my story just a little bit stronger. Okay, I'm going to get you out here. And here's where I'm going to do it. I'm going to go into my Indian turquoise, which I didn't have out earlier. And I'm going to want to lead, lead that story around a little bit. I'm going to go Indian turquoise plus white. And we're going to scumble it up into where her magic trail is coming out. 
and then where that's going to meet up. Okay, so then I'm going to go into a little bit more white. And then I'm going to sneak it around in between, like pew, 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 kind of thing. A little bit more Indian turquoise to give it a foundation. Okay, which is technical talk for um, magic dust. This is Bahama Blue. Let's go in and sprinkle stars. And I think I may want to go into just a little bit of the green. I don't have any idea how this is going to work out, but I've got an isolated color and I want a little bit more, a little bit more of that green running around somewhere. Which I guess I'm getting, actually, you know what? I'm getting that with the, um, with the Bahama Blue. Let me get a little star back here. into our white and back into magic fairy dust okay so that is starting to just bring everybody together and now I think it's time to spatter and trim okay so we're gonna do some spattering I'm gonna stand up get some spattering with some white off always always tap off and I want some strong spatters 